My name is John McKeon. I'm the moderator for the Teradata River, and today we have with us Greg Dertinger. He is the Group Director for Acquisition and Retention Marketing at United Healthcare. Greg, welcome to the river. Well, thank you, John. It's a pleasure to be here today. Craig, you have a very interesting talk coming up at Partners Conference, and a bunch of people talk about thinking nationally, acting locally, but you guys actually have done it. And so how did you get your team actually engaged to move in this direction? Well, you know, we're a national company. Most of what we've done in the past was corporate-driven out of corporate headquarters or some key strategic offices around the country. And one of the gaps that we we always knew we had was around the ability to speak to the local markets and talk to the activities going on in the local markets. And activities, I mean product launches, network expansions, rate activity, things like that. So we knew that we were going to do it. We had to do it. The directive came down. And one of the things that meant to my team is we really started to look at what tools we had in place to make that happen. About a year before that directive came down, we actually launched with a Primo and the marketing studio. And it helped. During that year, we got our legs under us and really made sure that we had it fine-tuned on how it worked. But this directive really helped us focus more on how we take all that information and all the capabilities that the Primo Marketing Studio had and put it into action and make it live within our campaigns, if you will. So what we were able to do is, at that point, take our national capabilities and our economies of scale that come with that and really start to leverage that. We started to plan for increased targeting and refinement within each market. So it helped us understand you know, what data do we have within each market to really get down to that right prospect in every given market to make sure that we are producing good, strong leads coming across for our sales teams, for the brokers who actually sell the cases. And another big part of it was the messages that we were sending out up until this point we're all national in nature. So it talked about kind of United Healthcare's general capabilities. But what this directive kind of forced us to do is take a look at how can we get market specific messaging in all of these markets, but again, do it within the national team, my team of four, and enable that to make sure that we do get relevant messaging and relatable messaging out to these prospects in any given market. And we also knew that we had to be prepared to increase or take on the increased volume that we were going to start to see from the regional marketers. Once we built out this capability, those campaigns and their ability to do and their willingness to do campaigns on their own, all those are going to come to us since we were able to pull lists, track results, etc. So we knew what we were going to see an increased volume of this campaign activity that we were able to not own necessarily, but support and make sure that we enabled them to do their campaigning as well. And of course, we received no additional dollars and no additional people to make all this happen. So that was a good challenge for us. Craig, when you actually go and put this into action, you're going after you know, better segmentation, efficiencies. And the other dimension is how do you think nationally, act locally, and still create an integration around the marketing efforts? Well, the integration part comes with the campaigns themselves. So what the marketing studio allows us to do is to efficiently start to put together integrated campaigns. And by integrated campaigns, I mean email campaigns, along with direct mail, along with outbound telemarketing, and start to build those campaigns out where it all starts to kind of develop a steady drumbeat, if you will, of campaigning and and prospect touches to try and get more of those leads in the door. We know as part of our, our historical research that the more we can touch a targeted prospect with various marketing channels, the more likely they are to respond. Because somebody who may respond well to an outbound telemarketing call may not respond well to direct mail. So what we want to do is build those integrated campaigns. So whatever their channel, we were hitting them with that, whether it be email, mail, or outbound telemarketing. Those integrated campaigns really helped us build that out. And again, enable the regional marketers to leverage that activity so they could see increased sales through their pipelines as well. Greg, when we talk about thinking nationally, acting locally, everybody knows in their gut that that's the right thing to do. But when it comes down to it, people want to measure the results. Tell me where you went with actually trying to measure the results of this initiative. 
What we've tried to do as far as results measurements, it's always tough, number one. With the campaigns that we were able to launch, a couple of things that we looked at in the areas of results, not only financial results or bottom line results as a result of increased lead activity, but we took a look at our increased segmentation ability and just what that got us and the ability to take a look at things from a geographic standpoint. We leveraged the marketing studio to get smarter about what we were doing around response modeling. So how would somebody respond to a direct mail piece versus an outbound call? Who are those people who would respond to one or the other? How do we get those into a list? How do we start to leverage that? Ethnicity of owner is a big one for us around segmentation and and success and how we speak to them. All that's going to help to increase the overall results because, again, you're speaking more relevantly to that prospect versus a national or even a regional copy points or more creative points or whatever they may be. So it's more relevant to who you're actually touching. And one of the things that we also looked at from a results standpoint was the efficiencies that it gained for us in leveraging the marketing studio, not only from a campaign development perspective, where it helped us set up campaigns more quickly. But again, remember, our volumes are increasing because not only are we getting our campaigns out in market, but we're also supporting regional campaigns. We went from doing 20 different regional campaigns in 2008, and last year we supported 110, all with the same staff. So that really helped us determine our staffing results as well. My staff was really focused on data prior to the marketing studio coming along. But after that, we were able to reassess and say, okay, we don't need as many data people here because the results that the studio is providing is giving us much more efficiency. So we were able to shift some of those resources from a data resource to a campaign management resource or a lead generation resource to address all these extra campaigns that were coming through our door. From a timing perspective, when you look to talk about the results, the time that it took for us to pull a list prior to Primo Marketing Studio coming on, it took us days to pull lists. We went from days to hours. From a list refinement standpoint, again, we could do that on the fly. From a speed to market standpoint, getting campaigns actually in the market, from start to finish, we took that and moved that from, you know, it took us weeks to do that before to doing it in days. So when you talk about results, those are the big benefits. Greg Dertinger, Group Director for Acquisition and Retention Marketing for United Healthcare. Great interview. This should be a great session at the Partners Conference if anybody is remotely thinking about thinking nationally and acting locally. This will be a great talk to attend. Not only will Greg spell out the steps in the journey, but also what actually happened, bottom line, what were the change in response rate, the time to market, and a surprising staff reallocation benefit.